What's up, Whittier? Welcome to What's Up, Whittier, a homegrown podcast. A podcast to showcase Whittier's businesses, personalities, and hidden treasures. Hey neighbors, producer Christine here with this week's Community Corkboard Announcements. If you have something you'd like us to feature in the Community Corkboard Announcements, you can tag us on Instagram, send us a direct message, or send it to all of our social media at What's Up Whittier, or you can email What's Up Whittier, um, just kidding, you can email Community Corkboard at What's Up Whittier.com. This week we have the Uptown Whittier Farmers Market every Friday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m located on the corner of Philadelphia and Bright. February 15th through March 2nd, join the Whittier Community Theater for their presentation of Death Trap by Ira Levin. Showtimes vary throughout the week, so please make sure to go to whittiercommunitytheater.org or just check into our description for all of the dates. Tickets are $18, and you can contact the box office at 562-696-0600. Join the Whittier Chamber of Commerce as they welcome Alondra Hot Wings to our community with a ribbon cutting. That'll be February 28th from 4 to 5 p.m. If you don't know how the Whittier Chamber Red Ribbon Cutting event um, goes, they're totally free and open to the public. You are more than welcome to come. This ribbon cutting will again be at Alondra Hot Wings, 13205 Whittier Boulevard, Unit 8. That's on Whittier Boulevard right near... Grocery outlet, big lots, kind of, uh, right across from Jack's, actually. Again, this is free to attend. It'll be a lot of fun, stay for networking, and light refreshments. So remember when I told you about the Galentine's Day event that we were going to have on the 13th at the Knotted Apron? It was just so fun. It was great. Um, George is a really great teacher. I really appreciated that. Um, I had really good... <laughs> I just didn't realize how good I am at cooking. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it was a really fun experiment. And if you do enjoy cooking, then this class is for you. So one class that I think I might want to take, I'm just reviewing the calendar, which you can look, you can see the calendar at the Uh March 14th, they have easy, healthy meals. So again, the cost is $65 for tuition. And on the menu, you get to learn how to make quinoa with roasted squash, a lemon bulgur salad, roasted honey and walnut chicken, and you can even make a chocolate chia seed pudding with cashew cream topping. That sounds delicious. I'm excited. Um, and I want to do that because, again, this is a really great experience at the Naughty Apron. And if you want to learn more about, you know, past cooking classes or just, you know, learn more about the experience, learn more about George, the owner of the Naughty Apron, Check out episode 69, Tie the Knot with George. So it's a great episode. Again, episode 69, it's a lot of fun and it was a great time. Interested in yoga but don't know where to start or where to go? Well, lucky for you, Local Fixture has uh, some yoga classes. So let me see. The next class is Saturday, February 16th at 9 a.m. You can go to their website, localfixture.com, and go to their event section to purchase your $12 ticket to go to yoga. Prepare for a full body exercise combined with breath work and music that will send you into an invigorating flow of movement for your body and your mind. Their all levels class will bring awareness to your body and your breath. You will be guided into each asana with verbal cues and gentle guidance to promote a moving meditation and a great workout. So again, go to localfixture.com to their events to check out their yoga class. Join J2 Architects as they present their series, Homeowners Did You Know? Saturday, February 16th and March 2nd at 9 a.m. Join Jesse of J2 Architects as they talk about their new addition workshop. If you want to RSVP, please text or call 562-522-0056. Again, so you can RSVP and receive the address. Homeowners, did you know that as of January 2017, you could now add a second unit on your property? You can rent the smaller second unit while you live in your primary home. Then when you no longer need all this space, you can rent out the home, your primary residence, and move into the smaller unit. There are two upcoming workshops, so again, the number is 562-522-0056. Join Team Remo the Realtor as they have their Veterans Home Buyer Party where you will learn the 10 Keys to Home Ownership Workshop. So make sure to RSVP. The link is in the description. It'll be at Keller Williams Pacific's Estate La Mirada. Again, this is Saturday, February 23rd from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. So this is a very special episode. I'm really excited about it. 
This episode is about the Hillcrest Festival of Fine Arts. They'll obviously talk a little bit more about what the event entails, but I'm just going to tell you, you cannot miss it. The event takes place Friday, February 22nd through Saturday, February 24th. The hours on Friday will be from 10, let me see what do I have here, 10 to 5, Friday and Saturday, and then 11.30 to 5 on Sunday. Again, this will be a really great event, uh, wonderful opportunities for you to be there with your family. It's a free festival of fine art. We should all appreciate art and beauty that comes with it. So please head out there, support your local community, and have the opportunity to see some real great fine art that you may not be able to see again. All right, everybody, looks like that's all I have for you in this week's community corkboard announcements. Again, get that information to us any way you need to, just so we can let the community know about what you have going on. Follow our social media. Like I mentioned, you can follow What's Up Whittier on Twitter, on Instagram, and Facebook at What's Up Whittier. On Twitter, it's at What's Up 562. You can listen to all of our past episodes um, at What's Up Whittier.com. Check out the archive that we have there. It's kind of cool. Maybe you'll see some familiar faces. And check out our social media. Me, your producer, Christine. You can check out my website, ChristineSingerLuna.com. You can go to my Facebook. Um, I think I'm going to put links down there. You can follow that or my Instagram at The Singing Moon. You can follow Remo the Realtor at Remo the Realtor on everything. So that's pretty easy. He's a really great realtor. And you can also follow Jesse at J2 Architects. So that's also pretty simple. Type it in. No other names like Remo the Realtor and J2 Architects. And make sure that you follow our wonderful hosts. Also, follow WIPA Radio. As you know, I've mentioned in past episodes, I'm doing this cool project inside the Poet Gardens, which is an internet radio station. What's Up Whittier will definitely be a program on the network. So just go to the website, WIPARadio.com, for more information. You can email us, info at WIPA Radio. If you're a podcaster, if you're a musician, if you, you know, just want to put your voice out there, if you want to volunteer, if you want to learn how to produce, learn to edit, let me know. So email info at WIPARadio.com and follow all our social media. All right, looks like that's all I have for you this week, everybody. Take it away, Jesse and Remo. What's up, Whittier? Da, da, da. Oh, Aws- awesome. No, that was good. No, that was that perfect. Okay? You, okay. Yeah, you did that well. Oh, no. Actually, I think we're going to have to replace your uh, intro music with Remo's. Dun, da, da, da. Or oh, replace, replace Remo his with yours. With mine. There okay. you go. Oh, well, we can put in Remo's, I guess. Dun, da, da, da. Then <laughs> I'll just edit it together. Okay. Or a combination. I don't know. Make a remix, Christine. Oh, I'll make a remix? Okay, <laughs> shout out. Okay, this is a call to any artists, DJs, producers out there. If you want to make a remix of our new fanfare, go for it. There you go. All right. You've been called. Okay. But I'm actually um, not your host today. We have a special guest host today, Jesse. And why is that, Christine? That's Let's first because, tell people why. Because Remo is living his pura vida in Costa Rica. That's right. He left us. He left us behind. Yeah, so um, without further ado, we do have Roberto Chavez, who is the chair of the Hillcrest Fine Arts Festival. Very cool. Roberto. Well, thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. It's such an honor to be here. So uh, before we introduce our guest, uh, I guess introduce yourself and and tell us a little bit about who you are, if they don't know you already, by the way. Um, I don't think everybody knows me. (laughs) Well, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, my name is Roberto Chavez, and I'm the uh, I've been the president of the Hill. The actually, I do many things. I've been I'm an art commissioner. I'm involved in um, different other art organizations here in the city. But for the past nine years, I've been the chairman of Hillcrest Festival of Fine Arts. Very so, cool. And you know, it's, it's been it's been good. Yeah. It's been, been exciting always. Well, I know you. I was going to say before you started, I know you as a photographer. Yes. So that's how I know you. You've shot um, uh, events that we've had here in Whittier, specifically Correct. with the Uptown Association. Uh, right. You've been the photographer. And, uh, and I mean, the stuff you've done for us it was pretty cool. I mean, it's uh, aside from sometimes almost pro bono, it feels like. <laughs> um, it, the stuff you did for us at, at a moment's call right like it's just hey i think they call you the day before or something hey, right get over here you know? usually that's what happen um you know i'm um i'm very involved in the arts yeah. and uh, my community is my community and you know i really love being here yeah. and i get to meet a lot of cool people and i'll just go and do it you know yeah. um my agent i usually gets mad because 
I'm very committed to my community, and she wishes I could have, you know, more work. more involved, yeah. <laughs> and I said, you know what, um, what I do, I do fashion photography, you know, and I've been working in different um, magazines yeah. throughout the world, and I live in Paris also. Um, so uh, this really keeps me grounded. I feel like I have a purpose because yeah. um, fashion is fun as it is, it always changing, and this is something that has substance for me. Yeah. So that's what I when someone needs me, I'll just go and do it. You yeah. know, and it's a little pro bono, but I'm but I'm okay. You know, because yeah. the personal satisfaction and you know is is it's better. I think. Yeah. You know, yeah. I create different relationships with different people, and you know, just I do the little bit that I can, and I'm just one of many in the community. That also are very dedicated, like you guys, with this awesome podcast. So yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I'm very, very happy and, you know, looking forward to getting involved with you guys, if you need me. That's it. <laughs> it's on the podcast. It's oh, recorded. Shit, so true. now we're going <laughs> to use it as many times as we okay. can. <laughs> no, I'll be more than happy yeah. to do so. Well, with that said, Roberto, who, who do we have uh, here as our guest? Well, um, with us, we have, like, two amazing friends, but... They're not only my friends. They're, like, great, remarkable, talented, awesome two ladies that are going to be our future artists for the festival, uh, Nancy and Koji and Kelly Bracamontes. So, Nancy, say hello to the people. Hello, <laughs> and thank you so much, Roberto. <laughs> and, and introduce yourselves. Uh, if you could hear a little bit about who you are and, uh, I don't know. Well, I'm Nancy and Koji. I actually have moved back to Whittier after being gone for most about 30 years came back and um, am really enjoying being back in this city and seeing how everything's changing and I mean I think there are a lot of good changes that are going on in here in Whittier so now being back in Whittier I've really had a chance to do a lot more art which has uh, been really exciting for me in the Bay Area I did art sporadically but time wise didn't have the amount of time that I have now so it's been a lot of fun there's never enough time right when you're never enough being time. creative and, and doing what you love it's just but Roberto has kept me on schedule so that's really good <laughs> she gave me a good you. goal <laughs> very cool how about you Kelly, Kelly? You yourself? Uh, I have been uh, participating in Hillcrest probably I wanted to count, but all the all of my programs are in storage. But oh, probably at least twenty five years I've been in, involved in the invitational show. So, and that for the longest time was about the only artwork that I did, raising my family and busy with that. And my husband and I have a business, but um, so that was exciting for me because that was a way for me to be creative when I could be and enter the the show at Hillcrest. So, and I'm really proud to be. Uh, involved in it a little bit in the last few years and really proud to be one of the featured artists because that's something I really I understand and I'm humbled that I I know how important it is and I'm really excited to add that to my resume (laughs) there you go and you guys both uh you both ladies refer to the um the Hillcrest Festival um I'm looking up on the website uh you're you're actually it's a Hillcrest Festival of Fine Arts um, which is coming up, and we'll get into details of, of what that, when the event mm-hmm. and how the event goes. Um, but in terms of, like, art itself, like, what specific art do you guys work with? Is there a specific medium or or, or, or certain style or or you're, like, like me and my kid, whatever we feel that day and, and whatever color we have in our hand, it's going on the wall? <laughs> Actually, I'm closer to what the way you work <laughs> because, <laughs> because I... Um, I feel like I have a short attention span. So like this last week, I was working on a two-dimensional piece, at, or actually three two-dimensional pieces sporadically at various times, and then I did a, a three-dimensional piece. It, and so it really is, because I knew I had a deadline, I knew I had to get certain things done by a certain time, but I really like working three-dimensionally, too. Oh, nice. And it gives me a break from sitting down and getting real detailed in my paintings. I can go outside and hammer or saw, or, and most of that is found objects, so I have to wander around the studio and the yard looking for pieces that might work. But that's the most fun for me is when I can switch off and do different things. It's a little 
chaotic sometimes, but it, it's fun. And I think it comes with being an artist, right, and having that mind because you just said artist – Art and deadline. I think those two don't mash. <laughs> right. <laughs> like they, right. Should, they should never come uh, together at once. Well, because um, you always can think of new things that you want to do. And sometimes the time restraints are such that you can't quite get it done. Yeah. Yes. But it's always there. It's kind yeah. of a, a cycle, which is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, plus, we're always trying to make it perfect, right? And it's always a continuing piece. Like, even though Ro- Roberto says they're done, well, we're not done until it's hanging on the wall. And if it's hanging on the wall, it might need a little bit of a touch, oh, yeah, right? That. <laughs> right? Right, Tape it off. That, I'm going to paint some more. Do you almost can understand? Or just sometimes you why. just have to say, I have to call it. It's finished. I can't paint any more on that. Because, yeah. you, you know, they, they, it never start. I don't think it ever ends up how it starts. I mean, no. for me, it doesn't. And, and you have to learn to go with that and not be, dis, you know, disappointed because oh, this is the one I had in mind but it's even more wonderful usually when yeah. you finish but well Kelly and I are working on a collaborative piece oh nice I gave her a canvas that I had started but never finished and didn't particularly care about and then she did some work on it and gave it back to me and today I That's said so cool. I have to stop give it back to <laughs> Kelly so she can do some more and yet you know I could see other things that I could do to it but I thought no this is a good place see what Kelly can do with it next and it's really fun to do that oh yeah I mean, yeah, whenever really somebody excited. else can finish your work I think <laughs> right <laughs> well then they it's have all to about decide collaboration. Right? <laughs> well we call it collaboration I don't know <laughs> well I went to her house to pick it up and I said she brought up this large piece and I said okay well and it's an abstract so I thought okay good we can that'll be an easy thing to collaborate on and I said well what parts do you love and what parts do you hate and I thought that way I'll know to work around right. you know, in that way so I don't cover up something she loves because I'm a, a painter and a collage artist so I intended to put pieces over the top and so forth so which I did and I, I even told her I said when I gave it back to her after I worked on it I said I wanted to keep going but I wanted to give you things to do too so I mean and I've had more fun talking about it with people that aren't artists they're like oh oh, my gosh, that sounds so interesting to see what that's going to look like. Cause, but know, also scary. People and said, very scary, yes. I would never do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but I thought it was fun. No, yeah, you're right. Cause you, I mean, you both probably have separate styles, separate kind very of much, yeah. Th- yeah. viewing things differently. Um, I know we didn't touch on, on what kind of specific art do you kind of work with or, or, or materials or is there anything that you kind of focus on? or? Well, I, I've been a collage artist. That's my main uh, form of medium. But um, in the last, probably about the last maybe 10 years, I've started painting more, just strictly painting. Okay. Um, my mother was a painter, and she did all kinds of things, but her main, main force was painting. And um, so I kind of learned from her a little bit. But I do collage work, so I Beautiful did collage paintings. work over the top of um, Nancy's piece. And so we'll see. I don't know. I'm excited because she's giving it back to me today. So I can't wait to see what what she's done. But but I don't want to see it. I want to be surprised. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's going to be exhibited at the show too. So I can't wait for that. See, and this is the stuff that I think when you go to a a museum and and art's hanging, like you don't get this backstory, right? Like, like, or or the history behind it. Um, I mean, you have such a small plaque and usually it's just the title of the piece, Mm -hmm. right? And then whatever it was done on, um, but I wish we—I wish they would have some kind of video recording or something that's attached to the that piece to kind of explain what you guys are doing. Because mm-hmm. right. as, as artists, it's that aside from the beautiful piece you have at the end of the day, the process to getting there is, I think, what's very interesting. Because um, again, you might start off with certain ideas of where it might go, right. but then. Kelly might change it up to a whole different kind of you know, direction. And now that puts you back into thinking something else, yeah? Right. And then when I started adding on to what Kelly did, I kept thinking, well, now the other parts, there are other parts that I feel like should be worked on, but I'll leave it to Kelly because I, I painted over the parts that I really didn't like on of what I had done originally. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, added some other things, and I thought, well, no, this is good because even though I'm still not quite sure about the whole piece, Kelly can go with it nice. and figure it out. <laughs> well, well and, and I knew, in fact, Roberto and I talked to Nancy on the phone at the same time, and we asked her about doing this, and I thought, 
I hope she says yes because it's going to break my heart if she doesn't want to do it because I just thought it sounded seemed like a fun thing to do. And I could tell by talking to her that it would work because she says, I have the perfect piece. Nice. And it's something that she's had for a long time and has been looking at it. And I thought, okay, great. So And it's big. Well, and then I thought it was funny because you said one of your friends said, well, what if you don't like it? Right. And I, honestly, that never really occurred to me. I thought, oh, what if she doesn't like what I did? And then she wants to cover <laughs> up my thing. But I never really thought of it that way. But yeah, I thought that was cute. Me either. I just thought, how exciting. You know, whatever you do to it will be fun. And it'll be exciting to see what then I have to do to work out what what I want to do. And it has been a great project. Mm, good. I can't wait to see it today. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm now I'm excited. It's like... I almost feel like just going and peeking downstairs. Maybe you just to come see. down and <laughs> <laughs> load it in the car with. Well, us. remember, it's going to change. It's going <laughs> right. to change at the yeah, end. That's right. <laughs> that's true. Well, we've been taking pictures of it at each stage too, so nice. that'll yeah, be kind of, maybe we'll have pictures. to try to display that too. I don't yeah, think I think that'll that. be. I think that's a good idea just to see the evolution of of how when it started to where it's at. Right, um, because it really has changed quite a bit. So that's probably what, like four or five paintings or, or pieces It'll in one. End up being one, two, three, four, right. at least. Nice. So, well, and I think Exciting. the the idea kind of came from the Bridges Project because that I know Roberta, you were involved in too as an artist. Um, it was a show that was at the Shannon Center where they had art, visual artists, um, musicians, and poets mm. collaborate on a piece, and so it was like the most fulfilling thing for me. I, oh, yeah, for it was me a too. wonderful yeah. experience and. They're going to hopefully do it again. So nice. it was kind of it's kind of fed off of that. Yeah. But you know we can work together and make something exciting, and it, and uh, we can all get along. Right, <laughs> right. That's right. right. That's the only time when you can actually collaborate, and everybody's going to be happy. Right. It's going to be. Yeah, uh, it, it really is, um, because because it's like ongoing. It's this piece that just keeps going and going and going. And yeah. gosh, that's really exciting yeah exciting. so what what brought you guys into the the uh, arts is there anything that growing up you're like man I gotta I gotta get into doing art somehow well both my parents were uh, artists my my dad said he quit when my sister and I started messing up his paintings no way. <laughs> <laughs> but he's always had that um, art eye and my mother um, used to take me to a beginning ceramics class with her when I was four. Wow. So we got to play, which is the most fun because there are no, there's no pressure. You don't have to make a great piece of art, but it's fun to work with. So having that around as I grew up was um, really exciting. Then I, had, I went to Sierra High School, and the teachers there in the art department were just fabulous. And they were also very encouraging about exploration and challenging yourself. And so that just continues to flow then, I think, when you get that base. Um, And seeing my mom continue to do art through her life um, really was a a great inspiration. She did ceramics, and I don't have the patience for that because it takes too many (laughs) steps. I like something more immediate. But it, to have that background, knowing three-dimensional pieces, also helps in other pieces that I do in terms of construction. Nice. So you're collaborating mm-hmm. at a young age, because if you're m- messing with your dad, you're technically collaborating. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then my mother would give me some pieces of ceramics, and I think what I made first was a, a piggy bank that was a pig. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, yeah. Nice. yeah, do you still have no. it? No. no. <laughs> that is so, so cool. How about you, Kelly? Uh, similar. My mother was an artist as well. And in fact, she was um, president of the Whittier Art Gallery and the La Habra Art Gallery and very involved in both of those uh, organizations. And also, she demonstrated at Hill Street, Hillcrest and painted. And she was in the invitational show as well. But yeah, growing up, she was always, she could do anything. She did crafts and Christmas ornaments and beautiful things and sculpture and paintings. She was always doing something. There was always four or five paintings or something going on at one time. And um, so I I grew up with that. Um, I did a lot of artwork in college, and she was very helpful with that. And so, um, 
Yeah, I was around her. I'm sure some mothers way. were good friends. Yes, I am too. Oh yeah, yeah. Because my mother was involved with the Woody Art mm-hmm. Gallery too, and mm-hmm. so they were probably working side by side most of the time. Right. Well, and that's why I feel like this is an exciting thing to me because we have that connect. Nancy and I have that connection. That yeah, ground ground roots from somewhere. Yes. Like, right. So in terms of like growing up um, and going through obviously your evolution as an artist, did you guys know growing like growing up that you were that that's what you guys were gonna do? Well, for me, I I knew it was like the only thing I I could do very effortlessly. This you know in a in a certain way. Um, obviously, I got hopefully got evolved and got better and better. But um, it was something that I knew that I had to do. It's not. I didn't. It wasn't a choice. I I had to do it because that was my way of expressing myself. Correct. Um, so, and it's something that I enjoyed so much, and I still do. It's it's getting better and better. So, for me, it was um, just it just wasn't a question that uh, this is what I was going to do. Uh, making an income sort of <laughs> changed <laughs> that a little bit. <laughs> Because, you know, after a while you realize that there, you, you have to work in a very different way to see it as a business. Correct. And that was a hard compromise. So, um, but in terms of drawing or even writing, it was continuous. And there are big gaps where it was no time at all to do those kind of creative things. But it's always whirling in the back of your head that that's right. you got to do this. That's right. And and you're right. I, I mean, going back to what you just said, that you almost have to do this because that was your form of communication. I see that a lot nowadays. Like, back growing up, I never, it never clicked. But you look at kids growing up nowadays, the ones that have more of a difficulty learning at school. Thank you. Um, it's... The ones that have a harder time, at, harder time at school, um, with the traditional subjects like math, science, reading, English. It's not because they don't want to learn. It's because their form of thinking and learning is actually the creative side. And I, I'm saying this because I, me growing up, I, I mean, knock on wood, I was, I was, I, was, I love math and I love science, and not to say I was the best, but I was good. I, I enjoyed it, but like reading in English, hated it. Um, and when it came down to art, it, it was it, like it was like uh, like like they say it was uh, sec- um, nature, like um, natural. Sorry, it was very natural to me. Um, but I was learning at the same time, and so I, I, I go back and look at that. I'm like, man, so it's not that the kids don't want to learn. It's not that I didn't want to learn. It's just that it's a different form of learning or communicating. And I think that's what we're missing nowadays too. Because I go back to to um, elementary schools and even like middle middle uh, schools, and their whole art program, their the, all the programs that they have like hands on, are slowly kind of getting pushed away, right. and they're bringing in the sciences and the math, which is good. I mean, it's it's great, but at the same time, it's not for everybody, um, right? I mean, and well, and they do say that um, keeping the music and the art and even physical activity in terms of getting outside and running or doing those kinds of things that that they're all uh, necessary along with the sciences and the math and the reading and the writing yeah. and if you cut off one other parts are going to start to lose too so I think that the arts are of major importance it, it, I see some turning that direction again but it's a fight yeah. to keep those things going Yeah, yeah it's, it's very important um, now, kind of getting into the whole uh, festival that we got going on. Uh, you guys want to explain what it is and, and, and how it runs? And, oh. <laughs> and of course, everybody's points to Roberto. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Hillcrest is a monster in itself. Uh, you know, it is, it is an amazing experience. Uh, this is one of the oldest art exhibits in California and in both in L.A. and Orange County. And we have artists come in from different locations, not only local artists. This is fine art exhibit. There, we have artists that come from different, um, from 
throughout the United States because some people live in New York, they come over here, or like the Nakamuras, they live in Santa Fe, and then they send their pieces, and they just come from the event. Even sometimes they just send their work, if, even though they can all participate in person, but they always send them. You know, it is, it is exciting. Uh, we're going to be celebrating our 59th anniversary, which wow. is, is great. Congratulations, um, yeah. Some of the some of the things that I have uh, noticed I heard from usually from people since I started, uh, this event is held at Hillcrest Church. So a lot of people think that it's going to be religious art or it's just something small, but uh, it is not. There's so many big names in the arts that come over and participate with us. So we've been very lucky. Some of them have um, they're representing different galleries throughout the United States. Or some of them, like the Nakamuras, they have uh, pieces that, at the Smithsonian. So it is, it is, it is big, and um, it is fine art. I and mean, it is we'll, fine we'll, art, we'll, correct? We'll. And that's the only, I guess the, the the easiest way for someone that has like you know a large family to go as a whole to experience art in different forms. You know, because we have from ceramics, mixed media, oil painting. Demonstrators. And it's um, a huge number of artists. It's a huge number, like approximately two hundred artists participate. Wow! So it takes it takes a while for us to we we meet throughout the whole year. The board uh, we start selecting first who's going to be our um, our future artists, and we go through a big list and names, and we start seeing who know who has more relevance because I think they all have. But we base ourselves on, like, what kind of art we haven't shown yet. And let's say if we, we had last year, let's say, a ceramic artist, but we don't want to have in this year another ceramic artist. So, so we're going to change and vary a little bit and makes it exciting. Um, and we, this this time, we have, like, these two amazing artists, Nancy and, Ke- and Kelly, you know, they... they you have to see their work. So, Very <laughs> cool. I can go on and on when I, with them. And, and when I approach oh, the them, especially... <laughs> I know. We're, no we're sweating over here. <laughs> when I told Kelly and asked her if she wanted to be... will do us the honor of be our future artist, she thought I was kidding. I'm like, no. And at that time, you were having at uh, Shafee College? Shafee Museum. Shafee, yeah, Shafee, Shafee Museum. Museum Art. She has yeah. a solo show, so... That goes to tell you like yeah, what yeah. kind of how amazing her work is, and then um, you contacted Nancy and asked her, and it was we were chasing Nancy like for a long time <laughs> for the last fifty nine years. <laughs> until to play, finally, she <laughs> said yes. Even though she has participated every year, um, finally, I guess she got tired of us calling her, and she says, <laughs> "Okay, fine, I'll do it." And you no, know, it has I been a good experience. <laughs> It is always challenging, you know. It is stressful, and all the all the future artists they always go through the same stress. Like, oh my god, now all the attention is gonna be on me. Like, what am I gonna do? And it's always ended up being fun, you know. So this event is a three day event. Three day event, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, mm-hmm. and it's a twenty second, twenty third, and twenty fourth. Correct. And then, what are the hours for this event? Um, on Friday and Saturday is ten in the morning to five. And then Sunday, um, we it's eleven thirty yeah. to five. Uh-huh. Okay, uh-huh. and it's a free event. It's a free event. It's Everybody's for the welcome. Whole family, everybody. And then on Saturday and Sunday, we have activities for children, and all this is free. You nice. know, they get to experience the little inner artists. You know, and they are very talented. Some mm-hmm. of them create very cool things. So. And you're going to have, uh, I'm looking up, uh, you're going to have live, dem- live demonstrations? Live demonstrators and music. Uh, this uh, Saturday, we're going to be having poetry readings and, oh, well, many things. Kelly, well, and also, me we're going to have high school art. Oh, the high school also so participate. It's part yes. of the show as well. Oh, nice. And Roberto's actually judging that. Yeah, I'm the judge for the high school. Very cool. Mm-hmm. I Can developed I, some skills judging high school art because of um, the 38th Congressional High School uh, District. I'm the chairman for uh, Congresswoman's Linda Sanchez event. So I've been doing it for the past five years. And Kelly was one of my judges. Was it last mm-hmm. year two years ago? Yeah, uh, two, two years, years ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's 
just so many pieces that come. And, and bring your checkbook too, because uh, I'm reading this and. <laughs> There's going to be art for sale, and if oh, you find yes. something that you like, you better buy it. We have something for everyone, I think, especially in our yeah. boutique. So, um, and the if you go, are great too. yeah, if you go right now to the church, well, right now everything is. Uh, we literally set up like like a month ahead. We need to build the walls. The real for a real good <laughs> cost. <Yeah. laughs> uh, set up rooms and you know move things around, and the whole installations became um, into a gallery. We turned the whole church into a gallery, and again, um, this is started. As, I think I believe as a fundraising event to build the new uh, sanctuary, right. which is you know arch- beautiful architecture from mid uh, century. Mm. In the 50s is beautiful. You have this amazing. We're, since we're on top of the hill, you have all these amazing views. So green, so beautiful. So nice. it is a it is a good place, even just to go and meditate. How do you get there? Um, it is actually a lot of people don't know how to get there. It's like a little hidden. Uh, if you, well, everybody is familiar with uh, Whitwood uh, Shopping Center. When Santa Gertrude is, you drive north. And the straight turn, San Agatruides, turns into West Road. And as soon as you do the curve, which is like from the shopping center less than a mile, mm-hmm. yeah. maybe about close to a mile, um, that's already uh, seen the heights, uh, as, um, La Havre oh, Heights. Nice. And uh, you'll see the church. And that's right behind that is uh, seen the Heights, mm-hmm. I think so, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it connects. I have a high in the highest like that area. But it's close to Whittier Boulevard. And there'll be shuttles, too. We have shuttles so for the overflow parking. Nice. Um, on um, on Saturday and Sunday, we have the overflow parking lot, which is in La Serna. So um, every 10, 15 minutes, there is a shuttle going up and down. To, so get know. there early. Get that early, so yes. You don't have to get uh, worry about parking. Yeah, yeah. Parking. Correct. There's food. Parking. There's yeah, food. Man, you can stay all day. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there are people that come over and stay there for a for a while because there's so much art to see, and then people they just find out like in every single room almost there's more art and more art, and then when it comes time to for them to decide on a piece, it's very hard for them just to select one piece. <laughs> so it is uh, it is amazing. You know, it's, 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 it's a good, it's, it's a great event. No, I'm, again, I'm looking up the information. It's amazing on what you guys have going on. Um, obviously, you can see some of the pieces that they have. Uh, the stuff that you have on here for exhibits, is that going to be exhibited actually at the festival? Or, or are these are just different types of exhibits that you guys had set up previously? Uh, no, some of them are the current pieces. Like if you go to the website, you're going to see some uh, current pieces that are going to be shown. Okay. And they're part of, um, you know, created by our future artists. And usually we don't like to show like a lot of their uh, just work. Just give them a little So it's a little teaser. Yeah, yeah like go. come over here and see more. <laughs> but it's amazing. And then if you go to social media and Instagram and on our Facebook page, uh, you'll see um, some short videos and a little more of their art and their inspirations. And, um, you know, it's, uh, and what they do. It's no. always very exciting. Again, from my end, uh, looking at it from an artist's perspective, it's like I wish some of this stuff would happen more often because you just don't have – there's not enough showcasing for the amount of artists that we have, right, in the community. Correct. Um, and, again, right now we're just talking about paintings and, and stuff that actually is hanging on the wall. But you're right. You mentioned, you know, uh, uh, music. I mean, that's one that, man, I, I, you know, we just need, like, a big stage where we could have everybody kind of performing. Poetry is the other one. I mean, we're down the street from a college that is, it's essentially has a poet as a ma- mascot. Um Maybe maybe I'm not connected somehow. Maybe I'm the one that needs it, right? <laughs> it's like, I'm the one that needs a no, connection. No, there's uh, different art organizations, but none of them really is like Hillcrest. I mean, they're all good in different yeah. different ways and their own unique ways. But um, 
Maybe we should have Hillcrest twice a year. Twice a year. <laughs> there you go. Uh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> See, what? Let's talk about uh, no, it later. I will, it's, uh, it, it is, how can I describe Hillcrest? Okay, well, I was introduced um, by the Nakamoras. My first year was as a judge for the um, photography. So then um, I was approached by Grace Nakamura and asked me if I wanted to do be the chair because, you know, they were looking for some new vision, something different. And, of course, my react, my natural first instinct, my reaction was like, uh, no, sorry, I can't. Because these people have been doing it for many years. Yeah. So it's a very well-oiled machine. And if he something, and the whole festival looks very, like, easy, very, there was no effort put into it, that means there's a lot of work behind That's it. Right. Right. And guess what? Yes, there was. Yeah, yeah. So I told her that I was going to, um, you know, think about it overnight. And, and that night I just couldn't sleep. And, you know, um, in the morning I called her and, and I said, okay, I'll, I'll do it if you guys help me. Because I didn't know where to start. Yeah, yeah. And they did, and they been helping us and really Hillcrest is like a my extended family because um I never seen such a strong group of people working together. We all have different titles but really we use the titles just more to give direction <clears throat> to people but we all work equally. We all have different skills and and we all maximize each other's potential yeah. and and we support each other, and we are very, very happy. I think. Well, there's a lot of generosity. Yes. I think in everybody who helps um, put this show together, and that is, I think, historically, that's what's that kept it. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the commitment is like unbelievable, and it's a lot of the people have been working on it for quite a long time, and you since just, the beginning, and right. this, their, the heart, their whole one. heart is in it. You can just feel it, and like you know. Everybody's got your back. You don't, you know, that kind of thing. It, it's amazing. I've never and, seen a group like this before. Yeah, never. And then uh, people that I used so on, like whether when I was going to art school, they were my teachers or my mentors. All of a sudden, now we are friends, and it's such an honor. You know, I'm always going to be very humble for the opportunity given to me, and and working with all these artists is just incredible. And he have helped me develop my skills and my talents and get more. Um, culture within what the arts means. Sometimes uh, when I'm in Paris, I go through different museums and galleries in Europe and let me tell you the quality of art and the techniques and colors, textures, the styles that come to Hillcrest, there's really equally like magnificent. They're like very, very skilled artists we have. And and again, you know, they they just, some of them, they just focus all their efforts so either to Laguna or Hillcrest. And a lot of artists that belong to different organizations in Laguna Beach, they started in Hillcrest. Wow. Yeah. So it's a big it's like, event. Yeah, like anyone uh, anyone that is over 50, they know about Hillcrest. Mm-hmm. Uh, young generations, um, I think they all should get more involved and come over and check it out and participate because uh, it really, when I was going, as I said, through our school, it was just such a source of inspiration and ideas for me to execute and do something different and crazy, but, you know. Well, we're going to change that because we have a millennial here with us. Um, <laughs> millennial? Oh, you're, you're, millennial. Millennial. <laughs> you're younger than that, I'm right? totally a millennial. You oh, are? Aren't you yeah. younger than that? Oh, <laughs> oh I wish. Just, yeah. I don't know. No, so we're going to spread the word. Like 2000 or 2001, you're a millennial or something. There you go. Done. So you have to gather up all of your friends. So I'll call everybody. I'll put you on the Instagram. Yay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, anything else on the event that you want to mention? I mean, are we, I think Nancy mentioned there's going to be food there, too. Oh, yes. So you can make it a full-day event uh, or outing. Um, and, well, and we'll have the information on our show notes, too, if people who want to kind of go back and look at the information. Yeah, if you guys want to come, um, um, Thursday is, uh, this is a jury exhibit. So all the pieces that come in, they're jury, and we uh, have first, second, and third place, and some honorable mentions in every single category. And um, this year we have um, some um, dignitaries and um, coming over Surprise and participating. <laughs> they they uh 
put state and federal level, there so, which is very exciting. And these people, they've been there before, and now it's kind of like I'm going to put them on my agenda because I want to come because they really enjoy it. And then they, they're always, the first thing, like, people think it's, it's a little overwhelmed the first time that you come over and see, like, all these walls with this beautiful art and galleries. Like, literally each room turns into a small gallery or a big gallery like Barwick. So, nice. yeah, it's exciting. Oh, man. I'm going to go back to the art just because um, I want to see what you, what inspires you guys or you ladies in terms of what you guys are doing. Like, is there any artists that you guys follow um, and, and use it as some kind of motivation, inspiration, or or kind of guidance on, like, man, I got to I gotta keep up. I got to step up my game somehow. <laughs> like, is well, there I mean, I follow a lot of different artists on Instagram and, you know, for different reasons, whether it's the color or the subject matter or, or some – some have started podcasts. It, it, it does. It does keep you going. Like, okay, I, I want to do that. I want to do this, or I want to be at that level. That that's inspiring to me in, in one way for sure. Nancy inspires me too. There you you inspire me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's and the fun. Oh. <laughs> that's the fun part about doing this all together is mm-hmm. that there is. I mean, just in conversations, there's a lot of inspiration that goes on. Um, I don't know if there if artists spur me to keep going better but visually or e- even in terms of music there are so many things that go through my head as i'm painting or looking for something to build that is constant um being out in nature i'm constantly collecting rocks and sticks and things that i take home So it's um, being able to be immersed in that kind of inspiration. Even though I have favorite artists um, and current artists that I follow, um, it's a a constant thing that is so exciting. If you can, you know, take the time to just visually go out there musically to hear things and to see different exhibits... It's uh, it's out there. Do you, when you are creating something or being creative, do you have to have music or something going on in the background, or can you just go? Hmm, lately, I've been having a lot of music on. Um, somehow, it quells the anxiety or the questions that go on all the time in my head like ooh maybe I shouldn't have used that (laughs) color (laughs) and then if I'm singing it can't really it doesn't stop yeah yeah, you know I can keep going Um, do you know how to sing (laughs) (laughs) don't make me that's that's the fun part is when I'm in in working I can turn up the music loud and just sing so if I'm having to contemplate on the piece and that's when I really start to sing nobody cares or hopefully nobody cares. <laughs> as long as you don't have the neighbor, hey. Yeah, no. Yeah, I don't think they dare come. <laughs> How about you? Do you do you have uh, any like? Are you when you're creative? Is it quiet moment or sometimes is it? Qui- sometimes quiet is much better because because I'm the same way where you're just talking about being scattered or you you get distracted. I get distracted very easy, so I yeah. try to. If it's quiet, then I can. You know, okay, I got these four things I need to work on. I'll have them in front of me because I work on, you know, it's less boring if you're working on three or four pieces at a time and you're like waiting for something to dry and you can work on another piece. But quiet or it sounds very crazy, but I'll have like a, a movie going on where it doesn't have any commercials, but it's just sound mm-hmm. and I don't have to, but it's probably something I've seen a million times, so I don't have to watch it. I yeah. can just <laughs> listen to it. But it just, I do that too. Uh, yeah. Okay. Then I don't feel oh, so bad. Yeah, no, it's oh, really I... nice because you can follow the dialogue. Yes. And you know what's actually going on, but you don't have to watch it. And then sometimes you can stop and watch yes. it. Yes. But the three hundred time. Right. But even sometimes, it, yeah, if I can stop action on like my computer or the TV, mm-hmm. sometimes there's a face or a, a port, a, you know, profile that I just find so fascinating. If I just composite. I can sketch 
and draw. Or a that's, painting that's in the background right. of something. You're, oh my Pause gosh, it. what is that? Yes. Well, okay, well, would you like to know what the movie is that I've been yeah. Which yeah. Is looping? Yeah. All the President's Men. Wow. Okay, that's right. Uh, <laughs> it's a very <laughs> it's it's right. too much information. Well, it's but a that's very action based. Yeah. But you can, I guess, there's a lot that you don't really have to see. I don't have to see it. I know Robert Redford's in there. Yeah. Right. That's okay. And, know who the voices are. Just, yeah, yeah. You're saying the line that comes next, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, I know that's. So you know, it's sad. funny you say that because the reason why I ask is that I'm go, I go through the same thing. So when I'm focused on working, it's got to be either music that that I don't want to. Maybe does not interest me is not the right word. I think is is exactly that, where it can kind of run, but I don't have to pay attention. As soon as I start listening to a podcast that is very interesting, I yeah, can't. Distracted. Yeah. I yeah. just I, I'm either listening and not working, or I'm working and not listening. And um, that's what I was asking because I it think sort of it's, takes over your whole brain. You're right. so you can't right. visually yeah, do anything yeah. else. And it's again, it's interesting how how it just the mind how the mind works, you know, and and. Uh, and how it puts us in that mood, you know, that state to be creative. Right. Yeah. What, what would you say, what would you tell or what kind of advice would you give to uh, a, a kid who's kind of starting up uh, in the arts? Um, what kind of advice or suggestions or... or... Years ago, uh, a woman, uh, Ray Eames, as a matter of fact, who was a furniture designer and creative, very creative person, once told me face to face, draw every day, no matter what it is, just draw every day. Well, I've never quite been able to do that. <laughs> I don't have the discipline. But now that I've been working so much on different drawings and different paintings, the fact that I'm doing something artistic every single day makes a world of difference. So even after this show, after the pressure is gone. Yeah. I feel like that's one thing that I should continue to do is to sketch or draw or do something every single day, even if it's at breakfast and I'm... You're going to need it because there is something else, co- something else coming. Oh, but I, dun, dun, I can't uh, Okay, so I can't stop here. No, just keep going, keep going. <laughs> okay, so, you, keep going. So I will t- try to take my own advice and yes. draw every <laughs> single day and see what comes out of it because I had drawings that I had put aside and that I took out and start and really got excited about. If I could do that or if for advice, I mean, even if you're in music, you know, play in an instrument every day, write every day, little jotting down of thoughts. Um, it, it Consistency, I think, is what really helps in the end. Oh, you have to ask him about the subject. So what is the subject of the creation of some of your art? My subject? <laughs> You're going to love it. Well, most These beautiful of, women. They go. Most, <laughs> most of my paintings are of um, what you would consider traditional um, geishas. But because... Even though I'm of Japanese ancestry, I am so American that it, all of the paintings have a, a, a Western twist to them. So you're, the, I, I don't want them to be, you know, isolated and pampered. They're out doing work or they're f- fighting with the pencil or you know. So it's East meets to West basically, nice. um, because it's it, it's a traditional view but in a non-traditional way it's not who i am so she may put on cowboy boots or do something really weird <laughs> still that's in the humor, humor. Yeah, that's humor. humor yeah. to it yeah. well it gets kind of crazy they actually <laughs> they speak i think uh the subject your subject is very relevant right now especially with the whole the me too movement and all these women in power I think you were one of the first people empowering these characters, the female characters. Well, and to it, be because when there's a, a little bit of a disconnect for for most Western thinkers about what the geisha means. Right. And um, 
I, I don't want that to be her only role. Most of the women, if you look historically, were very, very strong women. They had huge backgrounds in the cultural arts, uh, music and writing and poetry and painting. But that sort of gets whitewashed over in terms of what the whole image is of, of a typical geisha. So well, I'm going to break the, down those <laughs> barriers. <laughs> and Kelly is uh, more or less uh, something similar Well, I I have a series of paintings that are or collages that I do that are women too, um, women's backs, and um, I actually uh, created a few that have a Japanese style to them for the show. So there's a couple of those in the show, and my I have birds and. I do a lot of um, mission style structures, so I have those. Those yeah, are going to be in the show. Oh, thank you. Oh, beautiful pieces. And um, some, I have some abstract work too. So I have a little. I, it's. I guess it's part of the distraction. I have all different kinds of things. I'm oh, trying, that's so, yeah. yeah. I think we do really well together because <laughs> <laughs> mine we are have kind to take of this on the road. <laughs> very eclectic little yeah. things yeah. <laughs> will pop up. I, I say we're multitasking. I don't know if it's... That's a good way to put it. Good, yeah, that's a good way. Because that's what it is. You're just kind of putting everything together. Um, so just, sorry, going back to the question I asked, asked Nancy about about what, what kind of... Um, what would you tell a young artist coming up? Any suggestions, recommendations? Or? Well, it's certainly a tricky field. There's no doubt. And, it, and if you're an, a burgeoning artist or... You know, like an artist like Nancy and I are in Roberto's professional um, in a different way, too, with photography. It's tricky. I mean, it just depends on your passion. I think, you you know, you can do anything you want to do if you want it bad enough. And uh, you certainly you need to get the background and the schooling and training. And um, hopefully you have a support system that helps you along. But... Um, I love it. I mean, it's brought me so much joy, for sure. So I think it just depends on what you want to do with it, yeah. where you can go. You know, you can go commercial. You can um, be more on the designing side. There's all different kinds of things you can do. You just have to hone your skills and, you know, find a, a good mentor. Always helpful, too. So Keep keep at it. What about what about you, Roberto? What, what, do you, what would you... Uh... Well, I always... Uh, I was uh, I was teaching at Rio Hondo College for a while, and I was teaching photojournalism, and that was one of the questions that the students always came over and told me and asked me, you know, like, like what can I do? Should I do this? But there's already like a gazillion photographers, and I always told them, I said, if it's in your heart, just follow it because that's what the advice that was given to me. I originally went to law school, and I graduated from law school. I never thought I was gonna do photography until I decided to switch, I, even though I've always been doing photography since I was little, um, it was something that, that really opened up and framed me. And there's so much business in the art industry. You just need to be prepared. You have to have some schooling. Um, you, you need to have mentors, like um, Kelly was saying, um, someone that can really help you along the way. But always keep in mind that you're an artist. You have two options. There's two kind of artists that I see. The people that are very commercially inclined and live in you know, beautiful homes, top of the hills, or the ones that chose to live a bohemian life. So neither of ours is wrong. I, don't, I think they both valid. But it's just you need to define what kind of artist you want to be. And like me, I... I went to the Art Center College of Design, and I obviously chose the commercial side, and it has been very good. And low, when I thought first for a while that it was being such a waste of time, actually, know it helps me a lot when I'm reading contracts. Sometimes the <laughs> clients go like, how do you know this? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, because this is, you know, I don't yeah. tell them everything, but some of them know that. You know. Right. Yeah, start off as a <laughs> business major a business and then do art. That would help. <laughs> no, that help. No, but you just follow your heart. You know, it is if it is in you, it's in you. And, of course, along the way, you're going to have all these people saying, oh, don't do this, don't do that. But if it's your dream, it's your dream. Yeah. So live it. Right. Go for it. Reach for it. Be hungry. You want to have it. So 
until and then when you have it you want more but it's good because it prepares you to do more and more and more just like you know like we have with Nancy and 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 Kelly so they're very accomplished artists so I'm very honored to have you yes thank you I thought you were going to throw in at the end and get good enough so we could put you on the Hillcrest uh, Yeah, festival. well, you know what? <laughs> uh, actually, um, there's a lot of... Uh, um, I'm sure you're familiar with the art struggle here in yeah, Upton yeah, Whittier. Yeah. Uh, Marlene Brenegar, she has done an amazing work, and she has all these cool young artists, and some of them, I want to say that they're ready, nice. but um, they need to find a way to Hillcrest. Yeah, yeah. You know, because... Uh, we host a uh, we have like the first Saturday in October at the screening for all new artists and anybody can come over and participate and that's a good challenge because sometimes we said no to artists no because we don't we don't um, we don't like what they're showing us but it's more so because uh, the technique is not very quite refined, uh, yeah. refined. However, all the people that come over and are judges, they're very, very well established artists themselves, or they teach in different universities throughout um, California, and um, and they come and they do it, and then they're more willing and open to give you directions, you know, and their personal opinion, of course. Nice. But yeah, don't 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 give up. Just continue. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this up. What is your go-to place for a meal, a drink? Um, where will we find you? In the city of Whittier. In the city of Whittier. In the city of Whittier. <laughs> no, ladies first. <laughs> 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 no, I think it all defaulted back to you. Nancy. Well, I have to say that since I've been back to Whittier, I love going to Jack's for their I think Tuesday fried chicken. Fried chicken. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'm sorry, that's what just. What day is it? Oh my I'm god, Tuesday, Tuesday <laughs> fried Tuesday chicken. Fried chicken. <laughs> it's a, it's like five ninety nine, and you get so much food. Nice. But the fried chicken is good. I also like Auntie's. Auntie's is very good. Yeah. And um, where else do I go? Well. Those are two good places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I don't know, like three, but Kelly, tell no, us. You no, no, you go. No, you go. first. <laughs> I don't, well, I don't live too close, so I don't go too much, but... Um, Is there any no, place but you, that you, you used to... No, you come here, places. Well, I love the Pancake House. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> that's good. The new one, the, the new, original? The new one, where new Seaford used to be, oh, right. which I love Seaford, too, but <laughs> that's not there anywhere, obviously. Well, I have... Um, Three places. One is going to be so random, but probably no, not that many people knows. Um, my first one, when I'm here, sometimes, you know, like I want to enjoy a real uh, good crepe. So I love crepes and grapes. Okay. Uh, when I like to go and get my drinks, it's a vintage cafe. Yep. Because they have this spicy mango. Oh, my God. And Marilena, the owner, is like amazing. I just love her. <laughs> uh, but there's this taco place. That is in the corner of Santa Fe Springs Road and Lambert, next to Seven Eleven. It's called. It's like a little hole well, in say, the wall. Christine, do you know that place? Do you know that? Do you know that, Victoria? You are my girl. <laughs> Love you more. <laughs> we stumped Christine. Oh, uh, would I see you there? Yeah. I was. I was yesterday <laughs> getting my lovely. nachos for lunch. Okay, Lambert and Santa Lambert, Santa Fe Spring, Spring Road, Spring. next to the Seven Eleven. It's La Victoria, and it is this so tiny. Oh, it's old cash. Bring cash, please, if you want to go. Because <laughs> the okay, first time I'm I was so hungry, it smelled so good, go and I pull right. my ATM and like, oh, we just have cash. So I quickly run to the to the Seven Eleven, and then I got got me some cash. But that's the best place. The real tacos, nachos. Oh my God! Now I'm hungry. <laughs> no, I think we're gonna have to move okay, this podcast. Okay, Roberto's treating. <laughs> treating. <laughs> Bring out the cash. Um, the next question is: uh, What's missing here in Whittier? If you guys could bring something to Whittier, what what is that one thing? I've told everybody from here to Northern California, we need a good bakery. Mm. Uh, you know, nice baguettes or just breads you know kind of that old fashioned style normal regular bakery mm. bread good bread yeah. good bread I've tried lots of different places I have to go to Long Beach or I, you know you have to drive far to get yeah, yeah. I used, yeah I used to go to um, 
Fashion Island, then they have this bakery just to get right. my my bread, like you know, eclairs, parsley eclairs, or, right. all those things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, I go far for for one of those pastries. I will too. But <laughs> just look at me. I'll go far to get my pastry local. on. That's right. That's <laughs> get right. my pastry on. <laughs> Kelly, what, what what would you? Well, what uh, about um like farmers market? Yeah, because that. You can get your bread there. Yeah, a good farmer's market, a bigger farmer's market. With plants. Ours is and, yeah. too small. Yeah. yeah. It needs to, I mean, I was hoping that in the Nixon building downstairs they would put in good produce and bread. And there, pastries. There you go, Ricardo. If you're listening to this episode, you gotta. Yeah, we oh, need, yes, Ricardo. We, we know. Yes. We need that right here at the yeah. Nixon building. Like the downstairs. You know where's that? <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Roberto? What would well, you? I'm so, so committed, you know, with my community, and and there's so many things that I have long wish list, but. Since we're talking about the art, I think more support of the young artists. There should be more classes, more opportunity for them to go and express themselves. We have so many beautiful walls uh, that are empty. We should be capitalizing and having all these talented like muralists uh, doing something, you know, creating something. And I know quite a, quite a few that are very, very good ones. So we need to extend our support to all of us because... We just have to. We need to beautify our city, um, not only visually, but also provide the emotional support for them. Yeah. I think we all ought to, to the younger generations to provide, you know, some sort of support to them. Very cool, very cool. And I think that, well, should we ask him our last question? And then we'll let Christine, because she's... Uh... Yeah, I'll ask the question. Um so is there, you guys have been obviously involved in Hillcrest for a long time. You've been in Whittier a long time. Is there anything from Whittier's past that you miss that, you know, you would like to, you wish you would still around? Besides the bakery that used to be in Uptown, you know. But um, if there's anything else that you miss from Whittier's past. Um, well, I, the skate line used to be in, oh, wait, oh, you, popular, that's a popular answer. Yeah, yeah. Skate yeah well, I was at the Whittier Museum, yeah, and, we, and remember, you, Roberto yeah. was also on the chair. Um, he's on the board of the Whittier Museum, fun fact. And I, I said that skate land yeah, was a popular a, yeah, answer. No, it is. Yeah, because when you mentioned it, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember. Like, it was it was fun. I don't know, like, already probably half of the audience don't know what we're talking about. No, it was a very cool thing place yeah. to go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I have to think about yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I mean, there are a lot of things that are changing, but I do feel like it's uh, there's some good things other than the bakery. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I'm really sorry. Or or when you left Whittier and came back, is was there anything you're like, I'm coming back and the first stop is going to be this well, place? My Next first stop was friend. always <laughs> no was my, always coming home from my mother's enchiladas. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was that was kind of the only goal there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we would ever um, go out to dinner. You know that I'd say I re- I really want to go yeah, yeah. to this one place or no. And you know when I was in high school, I didn't do a lot of exploring. I was kind of a sheltered child. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What high school did you go to? Sierra. So I went to Lowell High School, which is closed now. But yeah, Sierra is too. I mean, I heard you graduated school. and they closed it. I graduated. So we're done. Yes, <laughs> it was yeah. the year. Can you graduate? We're done. <laughs> I had to go to La Habra High School for my senior year. Oh, so that was man. tricky. Yeah, wow, yeah. <laughs> that must have been hard. Wow. Well, with that said... Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Roberto. Well, for no, thank you guys for having us. Yes, it's it's, it's so it's much fun. fun. Uh, we were a little nervous. We didn't know how it was going to be, but actually it was very easy. And, and thank you for providing this this opportunity you know, for us to talk about the festival and this amazing artist. And, you know, and thank you for being in the community. And, you know, and we wish you nothing but the best. Like you Yeah, know, no, thank you. Bottom of my heart. you Nothing but success. Thank you, thank you. And, and, again, and if you have friends, if you're listening right now, you have friends, you should tell them to, they have to listen to the podcast. So it is it is very interesting. There's a lot of information in every single one. So Yeah, no, we're going to get, and especially with this one, we're going to have to post it out so uh, all of Christine's friends could uh, 
her generation could get into uh, these arts, these art oh, festivals. Yes. Bring them. <laughs> and we'll. Um, and again, don't get confused because it's in a church. The church is big. It is not religious art. Actually, the church is known because of the festival, not because it's a church. Yeah. It just happened that they they own the property. So it's, it's a good location. It's yeah, a good yeah. location. Yeah. And again, we'll have all this information for the event uh, on the show notes. And so for anybody who's looking to attend, they could go ahead and, and look that up. And then uh, we'll see you guys there on those uh, right. next all week. Right. Thank forward. you, guys. Thank all you right. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Whittier. <laughs>